Hello, I'm Rana from Curly's Clay Creations and today's tutorial is going to be a round planter. I just planted these succulents in here today. It's for a Mother's Day gift for a friend of mine I went to high school with. I posted one on Facebook and I got a few inboxes requesting a tutorial and a few requests for Mother's Day gifts. So this is what I'll be walking you through today. Not many steps, but we'll do this anyway. Okay. So I've already rolled out my clay and I've compressed it. As for the design, like I said in my last tutorial, I use many things that give me texture. And today's product is a placemat. This is great because it gives you the relief pattern. So what I'm going to start by doing I'm going to try to cover majority of the surface of the clay. Doesn't necessarily matter where you put it since you're going to be cutting out shapes so it'll all blend in eventually. press too hard you'll see the impressions being made as you roll once the clay reaches the level you should stop don't over roll it because you'll get unclean edges for the floral patterns and look at that isn't that just beautiful So when I rolled out my slab, I made sure it had a certain length. And the reason I did that is for me to not have to roll out another slab for the edge of the planter, which I'm going to be cutting out. So that way I can get the round part and the long edge in the same slab. So these are the two cookie cutters. or not cookie, that would be a really big cookie, but these are the two cutters that I'm going to be using for the uh, shape of the planter. Now, in order for me to get the round part of the planter in the same slab, what I did is I bought my largest circle and I measured around. So that's about 25 inches. And I make sure I give myself a little bit more room above the 25 inches and I'll get back to why a little bit later. But as you can see on the bottom, I have that extra space. So here's 25 inches and I'll probably be cutting around here. I'll probably do a 26 or 27 inch to give me some extra room. Okay. So what I'm going to first do is cut the large circles out. And as previously stated, I use cooking spray to try to avoid the sticking. And 
I'll oil this one too while we're at it. go ahead and put these on the side to allow them to dry a little bit more since it's easier to work when they're a little bit firm in this case and since I work on a cement board things tend to dry a little bit quicker than if you didn't so that helps in some cases now now that I have the two round parts cut out I'll get rid of this excess clay. And now to cut around. Since we've already measured and it came out to 25 inches, I'm gonna go ahead and do 26 inches. I use this ruler, which is great, since it has all the, it's see-through and it has measurements all the way through. I got this at a fabric store. Very convenient for cutting straight lines. This one goes to 24 inches, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit past that just so I can have my extra space that I needed. Try to get most of the pattern in the full cut, so I think that looks pretty good. I extend my knife a little bit past the ruler just so I can get a little bit extra over the 25 inches. There you go. And for the width of it, I tend to stick to two inches. Since it's not a large platter, planter, I try to do two inches. I think a little bit too big would make it oblong of some sort. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two inches thick. And luckily, like I said, this is see-through and it makes cutting lines and slabs much easier since I line it up to the two inches and I cut across. And since I knew I was going to do this tutorial and it's a little bit easier to make this when it's a little bit drier, I cut up another set and it's been sitting there for a few minutes and I'm going to be working on that instead of the ones that I just cut. So I'll switch these out and bring out the one that I already cut. Still not stiff enough, but it'll do for the tutorial. As you can see with the planter, it starts off thick and narrows out at the top. Now in order to do that, bring my slab, I prefer to have even ends so I'll straighten these out. And that's pretty straight.
So it's about 26 inches long. 24, 25, 26, 27 inches long. So I'm gonna find the midpoint, which would be right here. So you can mark that since this is going to be the bottom of the vase and it's going to be attached to the uh, foot. Not a problem if you mark it, it won't show. So I mark the half point. And another point, since it's a smaller circle and it's not a large planter, you don't necessarily have to keep a flat space on the bottom. Some people would cut the bottom of a circle to flatten it, but since it's a smaller circle, it'll sit pretty snug on the foot without you having to flatten the bottom of the circle to sit flat on a surface. Okay, so if you wanted to make it sit flat and you wanted to cut the bottom, I would say keep about two inches square instead of narrowing it. But I'm just gonna go ahead for sakes of being a little bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead and narrow it starting at the center point. You can narrow it, like I said, two or three inches out and start from this point narrowing, but I'm just gonna go ahead and narrow from the center point. I mark the edges, the center of the edges, in the center of this edge, not a large piece so it's okay for me to guesstimate and at that point I bring my ruler let's see if this one will work that's a little short so I'll still use this longer ruler I put the ruler at that point the center point and at the corner point and I cut down to narrow. And then I go the opposite side from the center out to that point. And the same to the opposite side. From the center out to the point. So you have that shape. And the reason I give myself extra is because the points turn out pretty thin. So this allows me to cut the excess and have more of a support at the top of my circle than such a tiny sharp point. So I'm going to move this a little bit back and bring out my circles. For my circles now, to cut out the center hole, I place my two circles above one another so that I can make sure that I'm cutting my holes in the same areas on both sides of the planter. And that's when I get my smaller cookie cutter. I'm going to oil that one more time, just in case. I don't measure this, I just eye it out. I like to place it a little bit farther up to give me some room to plant in the center. That looks pretty good. And I cut. I save these for my base. You could use one, I've used one previously,
but I think this time I'm going to double it just to give me a little bit more support on the bottom. And how I'm going to do this is set these upright. I'm gonna score the centers. I've had people ask me what tool I use to score. I don't know if you could see that. There you go. It's a lifesaver with a pin tool at the end. And this is when the pin tool comes handy also. Or not. <laughs> difficulties. All right. So I'll just do that for now. I place both pieces on top of each other. And you can clean the edges now or later. I'll clean a bit now and again once it's leather dry. So that'll be my base. And I'll put that aside for now. See, these are still a little soft, but you still get the point. Go ahead and score around your circle's edges. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and score both sides of my side piece. Let's hope this one works now. And go ahead and apply slip. Oh, this, this is giving me a little bit of trouble today.
I'm going to go ahead and grab my sides. I'm going to start at the bottom so that you'd be able to trim the edges once you get to the top. So go ahead and place the bottom down first and firmly push down so that it bonds. And stop before you get to the top. Same to the opposite side. Now at the top, I somewhat crisscross them and then cut, I cut on an angle just so that they'd be able to sit onto each other easier than flat. So now you got a little bit of a beveled top. I don't know if you could see that. And just go ahead and join those two parts together. Make sure that the outside is even with the base. And that extra slip that's in there, I use to go ahead and clean up that edge. So I get a brush, I wet it just a bit, and I go in and clean that slip up, smooth out the edges. And since you've already got this scored, go ahead and apply some more slip. I swear this doesn't usually give me that much problems. And since it's still a little soft, I know I should wait a little bit longer, but I'll still try to do this. Pick up the second piece and place it directly on top of the edge. Getting rid of a little bit extra slip that got to the outside. And what I'm going to do, since I want to stand it up before it caves in too much, is I'm going to go ahead and score the bottom. I'm scoring about um, two inches worth of space. And I'm going to go ahead and score the center of my base.
make sure I have enough. Don't want it to be tipping over. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick up my whole piece very gently since it's still a little soft and place it in the center. Now, as you can see, the opening in here is pretty small. So in order to shape it into a planter, what I do is I bring out the walls. Very softly, I make sure I hold the bottom so that it continues to be attached to the um, sides. And I open it up slightly as I go around. So it's sort of like bellying it out so that it doesn't have that flat wall look to it. So as you can see, I'm holding the top and stretching out the sides. I'm also using my thumbs at this base part right here and I'm pushing, let's see, I'm gonna bring this down so you could see it a little clearer. I'm bringing my thumbs and bellying it out. So I'm bringing it, as you can see, it's coming outwards. So I'm bellying it on the bottom to give it more planter room. And try to match it up on both sides. So I usually look at it from the top as I'm stretching out to get an even belly on both sides. And since it's a little soft, I don't want to play with it too much. I can always go back as it's starting to dry and stretch it out a little bit more. But as you can see, I bellied the, bellied the inside out. There you go. And before I forget, I know I cleaned one side up. I'm going to let this wait. I'm gonna wait and let it dry a little bit more before I go ahead and clean the other side of the attached parts. So there you have it. And this was the same size. So look at the difference in shrinkage. Let me get that a little bit closer. Those were made the same size. Believe that? That's about, let's say about two inches shorter than the wet one. There you have it. Fire it, glaze it however you like, and plant whatever you like in there. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Comment if you have any questions. Share if you like it. Have a wonderful day.